end August 28th, the seventh day of the week. Not a work day, a day of rest. Today is the Lord's Sabbath. Not tomorrow, not the first day of the week, but the seventh day of the week. You can check up all through the Bible and find, find that to be the truth. Well, brethren, let's get into the Lord's Care Ministry, our daily walk with Jesus, day 239 of the year 2010. Jesus grieves over Jerusalem. Well, brethren, I suggest again you write the chapter and verse down and study the whole context at your own leisure so you can go back and study this and get more out of it than we can give you. You can use the pause button down here in the corner to start and stop this video so that you'll be able to have time to find the chapter and verse and read along with us. Well, brethren, with that, Let's get right on into Jesus' creeds over Jerusalem. And to do that, we'll go to Luke, chapter 13, verses 31 through 35. A few minutes later, some Pharisees uh, said to him, Get out of here if you want to live, for King Harold is after you. Jesus replied, Go tell that fox that I will keep on casting out demons and doing miracles of healing today and tomorrow. And the third day, I will reach my destination. Yes, today, tomorrow, and the next day. For it would not do for a prophet of God to be killed except in Jerusalem. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that murders the prophets, the city that stones those, those sent to help her. How often I have wanted to gather your children together, even as the hen protects her brood under her wings. But you wouldn't let me. And now, now your house is left desolate, and you will never again see me until you say, Welcome to him who comes in the name of the Lord. Jerusalem, the city of God symbolized the entire nation. It was Israel's largest city and the nation's spiritual and political capital. Jews from around the world visited it frequently, but Jerusalem had a history of rejecting God, rejecting God's prophets. First Kings chapter 19 verses 10 and second chronicles chapter 24 and verse 19 jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 30 and chapter 26 verses 20 through 23 and it would reject the messiah just as it had rejected its forerunner forerunners god's timing the Pharisees were not interested in protecting Jesus from danger. They were trying to trap him. The Pharisees urged Jesus to leave because they wanted to stop him from going to Jerusalem, not because they feared Herod. But Jesus' life, work, and death were not to be determined by Herod or the Pharisees. His life was planned and directed by God himself, and his mission would unfold in God's time and according to God's plan. When you are following God's will, you must do whatever he calls you to do without letting any obstacles in your way. God will make sure that his will is accomplished. Our need for daily prayer. Grant me grace. Heavenly Father, to abide steadfastly in your faith and fear, that at last I may be counted worthy to stand before the Son of God. Faith is a gift that grows as we use it, and you hold fast to my name. I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord because he hath dwelt bountifully with me. 
Your daily walk on that narrow path will bring you eternal life with the Father and His Son. Jerusalem, lift up thy voice. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 9 reads, O Jerusalem, lift up thy voice. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Brethren, in God's word only do we trust. Never in the tradition of men. Beware of the tradition of men that make void the word of God. Are you putting off the Lord's Sabbath and saying, I'll go tomorrow, I'll go on the first day of the week? If so, you're making void the word of God. Is that what you want to do? Go against God's way? Because in Matthew 13, Matthew 7, 13 and 14, it says if you're making the first day of the week that is your Sabbath, because it's not the Lord's Sabbath, then you're on that broad path that leads to destruction. You will find that the Lord tells you if you go any way but to His way, that narrow path, then you're a thief. If you read Revelation, there will be no thieves in the kingdom. I don't say that. Your Bible says that. You doubt me? Search it. Get into it. Understand it. Believe it. Brethren, do you want to follow the narrow path that leads to salvation? Then get down on your knees and repent for following the tradition of men. Ask the Father and the Son for forgiveness. And if you truly want a change in your heart, they will hear you and come in to you and help you along the way. Why are there on your knees? As for the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding of the letter he sent to you, that letter is found in your own Bible that you should have before you. Wipe the dust off of it and get into his word. Well, brethren, with that, we're going to close for today. You all have a great and wonderful day. I know I will, and God willing, We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.